I'm Dave Comstock. At this, at this moment, I'm going to speak for Lyle White, because basically this whole thing hinges on Lyle White, what he was doing, what have you. I want to speak to some of the things that Mr. Chadwick has said. <coughs> okay. In 1954, Lyle White was not a historian. He was not a famous historian. He was a newcomer to Nevada County. He had arrived here in 1952 with his wife. Uh, they both got jobs. She got a job as a school teacher. He got a job at the union. I, he was working in the basement of the, of the union on Mill Street at probably the best paying job that there is or was in the newspaper business in America. Anytime. I mean, the union, the printer's union was the best union that there was. He got high, high wages there. Uh, he didn't need to go mining for gold. I doubt that he'd even found any gold. But that's beside the point, because none of these photos show in any way that he was on the property. Every one of those photographs can be duplicated in a dozen other places. He does not say exactly, except in two cases, he, he describes it as being on Missouri Creek, which is a far distance away. Uh, one of them says he's in a camp on Arkansas Ravine. Uh, that could be anywhere. He doesn't say he's mining in Arkansas Ravine. He says that's, I mean, that's where his tent was in his little coop. He's a funny kind of a miner to get distracted as early as 1853 by the much more exciting prospect of cutting Manzanita. I mean, we need more guys like that out here. <laughs> and he's cutting it by hand, which is the only sensible way to do it because it doesn't grow back that way. But he keeps coming back and working at it. Not only is he not making any money, he's spending his own money doing this. Now, somebody asked uh, um, Mr. Chadwick if there was any evidence that Lyle ever lived out there. Well, you'd have to be kind of crazy to live out there and have to go to your daily job at the union, and I'm not sure what shift he was working, what have you. I wouldn't want to try to do that. I live out there. Uh, I don't try to go to town every day. But he was clearing uh, clean Manzanita for five years before the county found out he was doing it on their land and on their cemetery. In fact, they didn't know where the cemetery was. And one day he bumps into the guy from the cemetery district and he's, and, and, uh, who asks him, you know, where, you know anything about the Red Dog Cemetery? So he takes him up there. And he gets balled out for working on it. Okay. The likelihood that, that this person who doesn't even know that he's been working on the cemetery property, county property, for five years has gone and looked to see who owns all the mining properties around there and get permission, what have you. One of the things we've seen is really true up here for all time. In fact, it's the case of the people who are here presenting their case. And that is nobody asks permission to do anything out there. They just do things. Uh, and where they're shooting guns, uh, the law enforcement people go out there and shoot their guns because they've been doing it all their lives. Because they figure, well, it's not going to bother anybody out there. Okay. Um, talked about low uh, gold prices from 1960s uh, on. The prices were low in 1954. That's why all the mines shut down by 1956. Gold prices, for, you, know, you couldn't make a living at it. Nobody had any idea when, if ever, the mines would be working again. One of the uh, really fortunate things that did happen uh, with the Amselco thing was that they didn't start an operation. You know who Amselco was? Subsidiary of British Petroleum. How would you like to have them working out there? <laughs> Okay, uh, 
I don't have much more I, I want to say, but I don't want to emphasize here that Lyle White has been really misrepresented by people who don't who don't pay any attention to the facts. They don't pay any attention to what's being said. The pictures that are showing him mining there. It's interesting what pictures you've been shown because those are the only pictures in all of these hundreds and hundreds of pictures at the Searles Library that depict anybody doing anything that resembles mining. It's the, uh, I have gone through, just as Mr. Chadwick did, I have gone through every one of those scrapbooks um, and very recently, and I've gone through all of them. And they're the sum total of the evidence that he was a miner. Uh, Lyle White was a very serious kind of a person. Uh, he didn't make a lot of jokes. Um, clearly, he did go out there explore. He was brand new in the area. And this was gold mining territory. He'd never lived in gold mining territory. He's curious. But the fact that right away, he gets deterred and wants to go clean up a cemetery. And not only cleans up the cemetery, then finds out through correspondence and what have you who lived, who was buried there and why they were buried there, corresponds for years with his folks. It was as a consequence of going to that cemetery and doing all this work that he became a historian. That's the thing that led him to become a historian. Great man.